Hey guys, Willie here. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I'm excited. This is going to be the first of a mini series on this channel called Unranked Two Masters. The account name will be Willie Diff, in case you guys are wondering. I'm excited. Back in the day, a lot of YouTubers used to do that. I found it incredibly useful when I was learning the game, when I was watching high elo content creators kind of explain their mindset and their process and kind of what they did. Uh, you know, on stream, you guys can see me play the game, but. Let's be honest, I'm either focused on the game or talking about my teammates or this or that, but giving you guys some intentional content about, like, here's how to path, here's what I'm doing to pull ahead. Um, especially another thing I wanted to address, I'm getting a lot of comments on the Tiger builds that I'm doing. Um, a lot of people saying it's hard to play, it doesn't scale as well, yada, yada, yada. Let's uh, go ahead and show you how to play it, and then you'll understand, because it is so, so good right now. Um, I am this confident I would go to Vegas and bet a million bucks that this is the build that Udyr players should be spamming. Um, there are other builds you can do on Tiger Udyr, but Tiger Udyr specifically, I think this is just going to be King Kong. So, as we can see, we, uh, spoiler alert, we have, we've played our first 10 games. We have an 80% win rate so far. This is a true unranked account. A uh, couple guiding rules with this series. Number one, no tank items allowed. This is a full damage series. The only two items we're allowed to build tank-wise are Dead Man's Plate and Abyssal Mask. Outside of that, we are not allowed to build tank items. Number two, we are allowed to play AP, but I'm going to primarily try and play attack damage unless the enemy team is, like, really good against AD Udyr, or if our team really needs uh, magic damage, I might flex into a Phoenix build, just depending on what team we're in. And then finally, just for the sake of the YouTube, this is going to be an Udyr-only account. Dodge if Udyr's banned, all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and boot up the first game here. Um, I'll explain mindset and go through it. So first things first, we are jungling against the Briar. AD Udyr versus Briar is a very, very easy matchup for Udyr. All you got to do is dodge the giant, like, the runway knockback thing he has um and as long as you dodge that you're good to go anti-healing is really good against him so you can consider that let me pause real quick and explain my game plan this game and how it ended up playing out so initially going into this game i've got three ap champions and i've got a draven bot lane i should be playing for dragons and bot lane this game is kind of my mentality in addition i probably want to do a raptor start because none of my champions have yeah we've got kill pressure early game with the draven and a moomoo -moo, but frankly they've got a very defensive bot lane with kogma and senna so i I don't really want to force anything until I'm level 4 in Udyr. I'm probably just going to do a Raptor start and then look to gank bot and or get level 5 in gank bot. We'll just play it like that. Um, so we're going to go and speed through this. I'll explain. I'm going to try and use things from my Fog of War 2 to kind of give you more of like uh, what it actually feels like. I encourage you guys early game always get a ward somewhere over here. Um, this is a really early word. I don't know why I placed it this early. Usually you can mate it until 115 and put it there. That way you can defend yourself. I have an advanced clearing guide on my YouTube. I'm not going to go through the clearing. If you guys want to know how to clear quickly on Udyr, make sure to head over to the advanced clearing guide on my YouTube. And you guys can get a step-by-step, auto-attack by auto-attack auto breakdown of how to do a Raptor start. Raptor start is really good if you want experience. And it's a very stable start for solo queue. And make sure you can get a clean level 5. And it's really good because how I think about jungling... When you load into a game, you don't know whether your teammates are good, bad, indifferent, on roll, off roll, on champ, off champ. There's too many variables. If you do a Raptor start and you can guarantee you get a clean level 5 and a clean back every for every game without ever having to gank, I would say why not go for it and Raptor start allows you to do that. So at this point, let me pause because there's a lot of information happening. So right now, we see the enemy jungler bot lane with a red buff. All you have to do here is you're farming, farming. You see him on the minimap. You just quickly pan and you come back. Okay, he's got a red buff. Let me press tab. He's got 16 CS, a red buff. That means his clear, even though the minimap is blurred out, I know he's only done four camps. In my head, I would have expected him to do these three, 12, 16, and then he would have broken off, but I didn't know that he skipped his Krugs. Either way, that's information I just don't have. I do know, however, that he has a red buff and 16 CS, and I'm about to hit level 4 after my blue buff. In this scenario, in my opinion, it is incorrect to go for top crab. You actually sprint across to the other side of the map. The enemy jungler, if they go for crab, is going to be level 3. Okay, you can take the first crab on spawn. If they try and fight you, you're a level higher and you're stronger than them. Then after you do that, you just literally come over here, kill this. You can either go raptors to Krugs or you can reset and spend gold. It's up to you. So now that we see him there, Draven gets first blood bot lane, which is really nice for us. 
Um, in addition, the enemy Briar kills my support. And the game state is, once again, I'm crossing over mid because I know that this guy is level 3. And I'm just waiting for level 3 Briar. Briar is now walking bot. I'm going to protect my bot lane here. This was actually a slight mistake. Let's rewatch this gank. Um, if I could do this gank again, I would have flashed on the Briar under turret, not on the Senna. But I don't know if I got here in time. If I had flashed right here, instead I decided to go for the Lightning Q on the Senna. I think if I had either used Awaken E or I had flashed on the Briar, it would have been fine. Either way, we pick a kill up. Um, and this is something that I saw... Um, you know, I was watching Perry Jungle. I really like Perry Jungle, but at this point, I've got enough gold for the items that I want, right? So what I'm going to do here, we end up getting in another scrap. I think we end up winning this. We got, you know, make sure every t every time you swap stances on Udyr, auto attack twice, yada, yada. Um, but when you have enough gold, let me pause the minimap because this is something that I have learned the hard way, and I would encourage Udyr players to think about this. Spending gold is really important on Udyr. The more gold you spend, the faster you get your items, and the more you can go through. Um, the more you can go through your jungle camps, and the more gold and experience you get relative to the enemy jungler, right? Right now, if we look at my gold, I've got, what? 2.2k gold earned and what does that mean i've got 1700 in the bag if i've got 1700 gold in the bag my ideal first back on tiger udyr is phage plus brown boots that's 1400 gold i already have more than enough gold and i've got a third long sword on top of that instead of going to your raptors and your krugs and farming them with no items and we know the enemy jungler is dead just go back to base Spend gold, come here and do this. Now, you could have gone over to his blue buff. Frankly, I don't want to invade here because I don't know where he is. I don't know where their bot lane is. They're walking back to lane. They could stop me on a blue buff. In my opinion, it's a better tempo play to just go back and spend gold. Looks like right here, what I'm opting to do this game, instead of doing my level four camps, fun fact about jungling, your first quadrant respawns level four and your second quadrant respawns level five. These camps are worth more topside than these camps are in terms of experience. So what I do is I actually sprint straight over to crab, deny the briar, the double crab, and I'm trying to find briar. I don't really know where briar is, I'm gonna be honest. So this is more of like trying to figure out where he is. As a jungler, especially when you're trying to climb in low elo, tracking the enemy jungler is incredibly valuable information for your team. Do you ever feel like the enemy jungler just ganks nonstop and you don't, you, it feels impossible to win? It's because you're not tracking them, it, you know? So we find him here. At this point, we're just running around the map. Um, I get caught with my pants down. Vex, for whatever reason, went back to base with her jungler invading. She had no mana, but I still would have at least stayed if I was her. We get lucky here and we live. Um, I should have died here, frankly. Um, this was a mistake. At this point, though, I am level four, and I need to do my jungle camps, okay? I cashed in tempo to go for an invade that didn't work. At this point, all I can think about is do camps, camps, camps. So we're doing raptors, krugs, and now we're looking to do the dragon with the enemy support mid. Kog'Maw was missing. The enemy support was mid. We're looking to catch Senna if she's walking back, but she doesn't end up walking back. Um, so here we're just playing hyper aggressive here um, because I'm just trying to catch the center as she comes back. Now with the snowballing Draven, the decision that I've made as a jungle at this point is I am level five. My best bet is just a vertical jungle bot side and play through Draven. I am very far behind from an XP standpoint, but the good news is from an actual jungle standpoint, we're winning very hard. I've got more KP, more pressure. We've got the first dragon. Frankly, I've got an early game team comp. Draven's winning on his own, so I don't really need to do a whole lot except keep him out of bot lane. He can't really ever gank a top lane. Heimerdinger is really good gank insurance. Like, don't gank Heimerdinger top as a melee champion with no gap closer. Um, so we don't really need to focus on top this game. At this point, now we're going to do our red, and then our raptors are going to come up, and we're just going to do our raptors on spawn and our krugs. Now we're getting very close to getting our first item, usually around uh, 10 minutes to 11 minutes. That's when you're going to start looking to get your experimental hex plate. Um, the bottom line is you want to try and have, ideally, your first item, your experimental hex plate, before rift grubs, all right? Briar, unfortunately, just plays me like a fiddle here. There's a lot of reasons why this happens. Number one, check out my gold. But number two, I just ate an ult. I didn't respect him. It was bad timing. If you look, I think I just used my awakening too. Yeah, so no awakening. My awakening is completely on cooldown here. Um, I just misplayed this. I should have kept walking. I should have used W. Uh, this was a misplay. Frankly, whoops. 
A lot of mistakes this game. A lot of mistakes this game. Let's go ahead and speed it up. At this point, we're obviously going top, and we're looking for grubs. Let's go ahead and press X. We still don't have experimental hex plate, so this is actually kind of a bad start for me, this one. Um, not too happy about it. You always want to have experimental hex plate before the second round of grubs, if possible. That's how you know you're on tempo. We're a little bit behind. Here, we end up just flashing over the wall and kill the Orn. Um, we are playing it super, super safe. Unfortunately, the Briar catches my Heimerdinger on the follow-up gank, but it's A-OK. -okay. We're doing a full clear down to bot. Once again, bot lane is the lane we want to play for. So after I reset and spend gold, get our item spike, we run straight top and clear straight down to bot. Once you have experimental hex played, our job is to just run around the map and eat jungle camps as much as or as fast as we can. We're trying to farm out Spear of Shoujin, but it's not about the Spear of Shoujin. It's about the tempo and maintaining constant dominance and letting the enemy team know that they can't get things for free. Here we use the Awaken E on the Sinna the Sinna Snare. We've got a Draven going in on Kogma. I don't think I would have chased that hard if I was the Kogma or the Draven, but he decided to go for it. That's fine. Funny part is, despite all this happening, we end up getting a lot of gold on the other side of the map just from Rift Grubs and turrets. This is why Rift Grubs are so good in uh, solo queue games, because they help your teammates get free gold through turrets. If you get two turret plates extra top, two turret extra plates mid that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten, that's an extra 500 gold for your team. That's like ganking twice and uh, getting rewarded, and all you did was do Rift Grubs, right? We've got a full clear coming up. I recommend trying to do Rift uh, Herald closer to 17 minutes, uh, just because that way you can use it for Baron pressure because the timer is four minutes however if you do get a free rift herald of course always go for it it is worth 200 gold here since i'm late to the gank we're just looking to cheese him when you go for a cheese the best way to do it in my opinion is cute you do qq lightning q lightning q then usually they react and then you go into bear stun so in other words you save your bear stun for when they start reacting it almost guarantees you get the kill every single time at this point briar made a huge mistake this is a 600 to a thousand gold swing because I'm eating his entire jungle. Uh, Briar made the mistake of going for a gank with in all of his jungle camps up. In my opinion, you should never do that unless it is a guaranteed gank and there's a very specific reason. For instance, Dragon Soul, stuff like that, you wanna do it. Now we're going for Rift Herald. We're taking it very easy here, not doing anything crazy. Um, once again, if you have a chance for a free Rift Herald, it's really good. If you can get Rift Herald closer to 17 minutes and onward, it's really nice. Uh, this is an early Rift Herald, to be sure. I prefer 17 minutes and onwards, but it's still a pretty good, uh, a pretty good look at uh, how to do it. Now we're going for blue. My uh, Gromp and Wolves are coming up soon, so we're just essentially looking to start our blue, stall out long enough for our camps to respawn. We don't care at all about what Briar is doing, frankly. Um, I don't care if they get ganked mid. I'm just going to full clear. You're a full clear if you don't know is worth 600 gold. So if you try and go go mid, even if you get a double kill, you're still letting 600 gold sit in your jungle, right? And that's just sitting there and the enemy jungler can take it away from you and potentially make up for the fact that you got 600 gold. In my opinion, just keep farming. And then especially with the dragon coming up, if we press tab here, we always want to spend gold before dragon. I just cashed in. If we rewind, I would have had a lot of gold. But at this point, we're starting to snowball. If you notice, my farm was really bad in the early stages of this game, and I was choosing to go for a lot of ganks. I was level 5 at the same time as the enemy bot lane. If I press tab now after hitting that hex plate spike, after killing the Briar top lane, after punishing him and using the tempo to eat his entire jungle before he could even respawn, I'm now level 12. I'm now two levels ahead of their bot lane, and this is how Tiger is meant to be played, in my opinion, is the early game, you're dancing, okay? You're dancing. You're not trying to be Phoenix. You're not AFK farming, but you're also not expecting to get a free win, right? You don't scale into a team fight champ. You want to be present on the map. Then, once you get experimental hex plate, start farming as much and as frequent as you possibly can. And then you're looking to pick up Spear of Shoujin. Once you get Spear of Shoujin, Peanut Butter and Jelly, Experimental Hex Plate, and Shoujin, you are good to go from a jungle standpoint. You're farming faster than anybody in the game. Your Lightning Qs will be up faster than uh, pretty much any other build that I know of on Tiger Udyr. And as you can see, do you see how much faster I am even than a Vex? Right? We are so, so fast getting around the map. Just watch me NASCAR map nascar through so we start this clear at 19 minutes and 20 seconds see how long it takes me to go because we've got a blue clear set up we end up going mid 
This is fine, just because our Draven died. We'll hold the wave, and then we'll just go straight back into the full clear. Looks like they end up going for this. This is a slight misplay. Never walk into the Briar knockback. I end up dying here for that mistake. Actually, we got Twinkle Toes. Nice. Wow. We end up living there. Nice. That's a couple close lives. But, once again, this is what Tiger does best. I've got a giant health pool. It's not by luck that I'm living. I'm building two giant health items. First and second. I've got plus 900 bonus health. Last patch, I die there. This patch, I live. That's why Tiger Udir in a big way is, or in a, in a, in a nutshell, is a lot stronger than it used to be is because you've got a bigger health pool to work with. Now, at this point against the enemy team, I can kind of build whatever I want. Um, looking at the enemy team, they have an assassin and an AP slash AD Kog'Maw. Um, Orna also does quite a bit of magic damage, so I'm just going to go Hex Drinker. Why not pick up a Maw? Um, Briar's not really a threat to me with this build. I'm not really worried about it. I want you guys to notice how long it takes for my Awakening to come back up. Once again, anybody that's wondering how this build works, let me explain it. I'm not afraid to use Awaken E. Number one, because my Awakening is going to come up and I do a ton of damage with my Spear of Shojin cooldown on my Lightning Key, right? At this point, I just used my Awakening just used it watch this play out in real time just so you can see why this build is so effective okay one two i'm back in queue do you see how fast the awakenings are up that is why the build is good it also works really well with conquer because the longer you're in combat the more you have a chance to do it in my opinion, anybody that's struggling to play this build, keep in mind, you're not an early game champion. You're not a mid game champion. You're a late game hyper carry Jax, okay? Your job is to survive pre-level six, between level six and 11, farm, but have a healthy balance of farm and ganking because you don't scale like Phoenix out here, okay? You can't just AFK farm, make sure the enemy jungler doesn't get free ganks off, Level 13, 14, 15, especially 16 onwards, you can duel anybody in the game. Slow it down, play a little bit more patient, and I promise your win rate with Tiger will go up quite a bit. Um, at this point, we are just going to go through this. If you're wondering what MMR this game is, by the way, I think these unranked accounts start in silver. So keep that in mind if you're wondering, Willy, what the hell. Um, we're just going to go for the loop-de-loop, -loop, I think, here. Notice, once again, I'm not afraid of dying because I have a 900 health pool on my first two items. I also built Hex Drinker, which gives me a little bit of magic resist. Magic resist applies to all your health. So I've got a very tanky build, even with just one magic resist item. I've got a Hex Drinker and a Merc Treads, and I want you to rewatch this. This is a Lich Bane, Magic Pen, Building Storm Surge Akali. She's not far behind she should have two items at 22 minutes if she's been farming correctly but she's really not that far behind i want you to watch again how little damage we take with the giant health pool we have once again i conveniently conveniently have awakening up it's always going to be up when you need it with this build because that's the fluidity the build provides you she can't burst through me with conqueror 900 health merc treads and a hex drinker that's it you know what i mean um, that being said, I don't want to discourage you from playing AP Udyr. I just think at lower elos, it's much better to play Tiger Udyr. Here's the other thing that's really, really nice about uh, this build is you do Barons insanely fast. More Lightning Qs means you get more and more, uh, you know, isolated Q damage off, which means Barons fall over that much faster. Really, really fun, right? So at this point, this game's pretty much over. Um, we can go ahead and just speed it up, but that is the early game. We're going to go ahead and just rinse through this here. Um, at this point, we're eating a full clear. We're looking for, I think this is the third dragon for us, so we're just looking to do dragon. Eat the full clear, spin gold, fight the dragon fight. We're stronger at this point. We've already won the game. They end up cleaning us up here, but frankly, it looks like it was a 4v5. That should be the last fight they ever win, though. The nice thing is, since I did my jungle camps, I had dead time, right? Udyr's coming back online. Um, I get a shutdown here. We go back to full clearing. And at this point, we're just looking to full clear and shove down a side lane and defend the Draven. Um, I know this seems like Willy. Maybe you guys want more intel. Like, literally, how you close games out, full clear. It'll take you maybe 30 to 35 seconds to do your jungle. And then you just walk to where your carry is or you walk to a side lane and you look to duel somebody. Tiger Udyr is not Phoenix Udyr. You're not looking to team fight. You want to split the enemy team apart 
and you want to make them have a giant headache, which is AD Udyr running around the map taking towers and one-shotting the carry if they misrotate or don't walk through the right bush or they don't clump with their appeal, right? You're trying to split them up. At this point, this game's over. Um, and I'm pretty confident that should be pretty good recap. We don't need to watch a whole lot more. Um, Tiger Uter's all about the early game. I, of course, am going to make more videos like this. Um, this is just a very, very quick recap. I wanted to get more of a deep dive into the first game so you guys can see the play style. We started this. Once again, this account started in, like, silver goldish. Um, we started right out of the gates with a 14-kill game. I'm not... This is not for the sake of flexing. It's just literally saying, like... I made mistakes, a lot of mistakes this game. My early game was ugly. Um, I died two times early game, I'm pretty sure. And we ended the game 14 and 3 just by getting the two items, power farming, and letting the enemy team waste their own time, waste their own tempo. And you would be surprised how effective this is. If you like this content, make sure to, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make sure to head over to Twitch. Um, I'm probably going to start batching these videos, okay, or, or these games. This is the only, the first video is going to be the long one, and then I'm going to start editing it down into more uh, three, three video segments, uh, much quicker, much faster much more like 10 to 15 minutes but this first game since we have a lot of people on YouTube saying this build is garbage um, I kind of want to show you that it's not garbage I'm playing it literally in Grandmasters lobbies on my Ghostbusters account and I'm also playing it at low elo it works extremely well and I would encourage you to just be a little bit more patient take some more time with it and I think you'll understand the power you have with it it's a two item build it's not a one item build it's a two item build one item allows you to farm into the second item once you get the second item start having fun um, and of course build the third item for the team comp you're against um, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one and I uh, hope everybody enjoyed bye Dang. Call me so I can make it just if I, yeah.